In this video, we are going to create ArchiFrame walls using the element type we defined earlier. So I will select the type we defined from this element type list. And I will not force the top or bottom level of the new element. And I'll choose the inside as the anchor line. And then let's look at some more settings. So the roofs can stay where they are. And we can force oversizes for openings. And then let's show the elevations in the same stories as the elements are. And then a uh, plank should be created on their own layers. And we'll be using a cutting plane to create a cleaner 2D representation in the floor plans. Next, let's place the wall element with a line. And since we selected the inner side of the element as our anchor point, I'm going to draw a line on the inside of the wall, ending here. As you can see, our Archiframe wall element is much thinner than the Archicad wall. That's okay, these types don't need to match. Okay. Next, I'll add another gable element in the same way as the previous one, placing by line. Notice the direction in which I am drawing the line. If you're viewing the wall from inside out, external wall should be created clockwise or from left to right. And the viewing direction is always on the right hand side of this line. Now I'll create a side wall whose top level will be forced to a height of 8 feet. I'll again place the wall element with a line. Okay. So now we have placeholders for the walls. I'll turn on a layer combination showing only archiframe structures to make it more clear. The next step is to give IDs to each wall so that each piece in the building will have a unique ID. Let's start the numbering from the letter A. Archiframe will make sure that every element has a unique ID. Next, let's address the element's corners by using the Archiframe Corner tool. We can define different corner types for each corner. Let's use the type long L right because when you look at the selected wall from the viewing direction, both of these connecting walls turn right in comparison to it. If you're confused about the viewing direction, it helps to look at the element ID text. It tells the viewing direction and also that this is the beginning of the element and that the end is in this direction. So the line goes from right to left and looking from the inside, it goes from left to right. And now that the types are set, let's apply corner rules. So when you set up a corner type for an element, Archiframe will find and apply a compatible corner type to the connecting element. So we get a result such as this, where the two elements connect neatly, even though we only edited one of the element's corner styles. And let's see what we have in 3D. So we have the wall element, which is basically a placeholder for the actual planks and other structures. But before creating the planks, we still need to determine that in this wall, paneling will go higher than the main framing. This can be done in the layer offsets menu. Here, we can either save our own presets so that they can be used for other walls as well, or then just apply the settings to the current selection. And in this case, let's say we want exterior cladding to go one foot higher than the main framing. So I'll specify one foot here for the top side of the airspace layer, and then do the same for the cladding layer. And now I'll just zoom in a bit so that you can see that the two exterior layers of the wall extend higher than the interior ones. Next, let's do the same for the openings. First, I'll select all the elements and then set opening offsets. So let's say we want to have weather boards around the openings. This means we have to create space for them in the exterior layers of the wall. So for the exterior studding, we want to have two inches of extra space for the weather boards at the left and right sides of the opening. Therefore, this layer should have a layer offset of two inches compared to main framing. And let's set the bottom of the studding one inch lower than the main framing and the top at the same level as the main framing. 
And let's set the same settings for our cladding layer. And then I'll zoom closer to this window opening so you can see the offsets in 3D. Next, let's create the structure of the elements. First, I'll turn on the grid and make sure it's compatible with the spacing of our wall studs, which is 16 inches. So from here, I'll set the grid spacing to be 16 inches as well. And now we can use the Archiframe command use grid, which places studs to the grid line. And this is because the grid now has the same spacing as our framing. Okay, here's the result. So the corner has type long L right, and in other parts of the element, there is a stud at each grid line. And on the other side of the element, it looks like this. And we also have full freedom to edit these planks. So if I want to rotate this one, I can do so with normal Archicad tools. So I'll choose Rotate, then click on the center point and rotate it the other way around. And now let's look at the structure in 3D. So on the surface, we have some paneling. And under it, we have airspace. And behind the airspace, there's some boarding. And then we have the main framing and the gypsum boarding inside. So let's first have a look at this main framing. Here you can see that the top piece is rotated nicely, so the studs go inside it. The studs go inside the top and bottom pieces, and the dimensions for this were set in the element layer settings. The opening place has the same material as the top and bottom plates, and it is also rotated. Next, let's look at the element drawings that Archiframe has automatically made for these structures. This topmost projection is viewed from inside out, and it shows the boards and the main framing. There are dimensional lines for the board offsets relative to the main framing. We also have dimensions for the board division and the stud spacing, in this case, measured from the stud's midpoint to midpoint. And here are the dimensions for that. And in this bottom projection, the stud spacing is measured from the left side of the stud, rather than the midpoint. And here are also markings for the openings. Then, let's go to the top view. So, Archiframe structures can be edited from any elevation view. So, if I drag these in the top elevation, the change will be executed in all the elevations and in 3D. Then, let's have a look at this lower projection, which is viewed from the outside and shows the main framing, wind barrier boards, and the paneling. For further editing, it's possible to explode this paneling into separate pieces. This is useful, for example, if you need to create a CNC file or if you want to edit the individual panels by hand to get the correct cut list. And this is where you would create the CNC file. Okay, so now we have these panels as separate pieces, and I'm going to undo this. Next, let's work with the single element. You might want to add headers to windows and doors, and in Archiframe, this is done in the Element Options window, right here. You could have these options set up already when creating the element for the first time, if you know the window and door width. 
but it's just as easy to set these settings after the element has been created, like we're doing now. Here, I can see that there's no space for additional studs, so I need to delete this stud. And that's okay, because there are no boards in there. And next, I'll select the target piece and open the custom lintel window. We'll use the same material for the lintels as for the studs. So let's place one beam on the front side and one on the back side. The original piece will remain, and it will be extended to the left and right. Pieces above the lintel will be cut, and just one additional stud will be added to support the lintels. Now let's look at the element's core layer in 3D. So this is the structure we got for the lintel. So we have the supporting beams, and then we have the additional vertical studs here and the original stud was moved here. Okay, so now that the elements are ready, you can produce the end results like listing and layouts. Archiframe doesn't maintain all the cut lists up to date all the time, so you need to manually update the elevations and cut lists before creating their final versions. To do that, I will click the update button and after the update, all the cut lists and dimensional lines are up to date and we can go to the end results, which are here in the Plank tools, CNC, Excel, and Prints. Now, let's save the element listing to Excel. If you're using a Mac, you can only save the text file and import that to Excel or Numbers. The element listing contains information from the ARCHICAD project. It calculates the estimated weight of the element and lists all the materials ordered by the usage of the element. For the boards, the list contains the maximum size of the raw material and then the net area if that is needed. And here we have three different elements. Finally, we need to do some manual cleaning up. Manually cleaning up the cut list for the gable walls usually takes quite a while. To make the drawings look neater, Drag these texts so that they fit into the frame, or do it the other way around. Then we can produce the final end result. If we were using wooden structures, we could produce a CNC file for Hundegger, Weinman, or H10 CNC machines. But in this case, we're just going to produce the layouts. So for the layouts, let's first use the default settings. For size, a US ladder with orientation either landscape or portrait, and let's use the fit to page. So this layout book is our end result. I'll just choose another one. So this page has landscape orientation, and this other page has portrait orientation. And these are not in scale, since we chose fit to page. 